Good morning, getting to afternoon. Uh, this is the audience participation section of my talk. Who's this? Anybody? Yeah, uh, Fred and Jigger. All right, good. Uh, and this, uh, and they're about to break into song. Does anybody happen to know the song they're about to sing? <laughs> this is where I hope to get Alice and Corey to support me by singing, but they demurred. Um, I say tomato. You say tomato, let's call the whole thing off. Um, and this is a bit of a light motif for my talk, as you'll see. Uh, so you all know it. Hum it quietly to yourself as a soundtrack while I'm speaking. <laughs> uh, so my talk is somewhat about publishing in transition, but well, perhaps more centrally about publishing in translation. And I'm speaking to you from several positions and perspectives today. Um, I have spent many years as a librarian and many years as a publisher. And I am currently an educator uh, teaching at the intersection of the two. Um, also pause for a moment to say I'm also the editor of the Journal of Electronic Publishing and was therefore the lucky recipient of Catherine and her co-authors article. Um, and the issue we just released on Monday is entirely dedicated to uh, training and education for the 21st century publisher. Uh, so if your appetite is whetted for these topics, you might want to have a look. Uh, we have a nice blend of articles from people who hire, uh, people who train, and people who have just recently been trained and entered the job market reflecting on their training. Uh, so there may be things of interest there. Um, I just completed the first ever course, course taught in the Information School at the University of Illinois um, on publishing as an information profession. Um, very nice, uh, sort of seminar sized, and serendipitously, or perhaps as you might expect, my class was split evenly between people who had worked in publishing and were now coming back to information school, library school, to get a new accreditation. Um, and people who had come out of libraries who were interested in learning more about publishing, uh, sometimes to work with publishers and sometimes because they hoped there might be a career for them there. Um, and one of the things that I enjoyed about teaching the class was listening to them talk to each other. Um, and listening to them speak to each other reflected the long professional life I had had of listening to librarians and publishers talk and speaking so much to both of them. And I became very interested in how we represent on both sides uh, both our values and the activities we do to support those values. Uh, like Corey, I come from a, a literary background way back when. Um, and this, off, this uh, title often comes to me when I'm navigating between the worlds of libraries and publishers. Uh, in this case, Raymond Carver's What We Talk About When We Talk About Love. Uh, but I would say in place of the hearts, putting your favorite publishing icons there. Uh, what do we talk about when we talk about publishing? Uh, because I think well, all of these communities, I'm talking about publishers and librarians and others, make strong statements about publishing. What do you mean by that? And Corey asked this question too. Um, so what I'd like to do for this presentation is talk about some of the ways in which I have observed librarians and publishers talking. And I think that there is sometimes more common ground than those two sectors understand. And I think that there is benefit from acknowledging the com common ground and coming to understand each other. And I will not claim, and I'll reiterate this several times in the talk, that they mean exactly the same thing, that they do exactly the same thing. But I think that there is an alignment, uh, to use the, the title of this panel, um, and that it's an alignment worth discovering. Um, so there are jobs in libraries called selectors, um, and selectors have to choose what's right for their community, uh, and connect it with their audience. Uh, publishers do this in the, in the course of acquisition. Uh, librarians think hard about collection development policies, standards. Why are they collecting what they collect? Who is it going to connect to? Are people going to use it? Are they meeting their users' needs? Um, which is not, not quite the same as the review process that most publishers conduct. But I think some of the same driving questions. Um, and we're both, and I can say we here because I'm both, um, we're both trying to get the good stuff. Uh, that, that's the real goal, the stuff that people need and will use. Um, in terms of production, uh, I found 
Uh, librarians like to talk a lot about project management. How do we get from point A to point B and watch it all along the way? Publishers talk about their production workflows. Um, and I uh, manage many groups of uh, people from uh, the press I was responsible for, the University of Michigan Press, and staff within the library working together. Um, and I found that the librarians were often really good on their production management chops. Many of them had had training in, in grad school on how to do production man uh, project management. Uh, and the uh, people of the press were, were more attentive to timelines. They were, they were very focused on how do we get from point A to point B in a certain amount of time. Um, and it was a fruitful intersection, uh, both like getting the job done. Uh, librarians sometimes, I won't say bridle, but they think about the word marketing. They want to be thinking about what they're doing as a product to be brought to market. Um, they like to talk about outreach. Um, and publishers talk about marketing all the time. Um, but it's about becoming visible, about getting, no getting noticed. Um, as an academic librarian and scholarly publisher, one thing I've noticed is that um, libraries are very good at marketing themselves to the campus, um, to, to making themselves uh, valuable as part of the academic community. Um, and publishers are very good at getting themselves known by the world. Uh, they're, they're, they're great at churning out of their particular context and trying to bring people in. And again, I think this is a fruitful intersection. Uh, this, I think, is a place where the languages are rapidly com coming together, uh, but librarians have long talked about discoverability. Um, and pretty much as soon as anything went online, as soon as we started automating our catalogs, how are people going to find what we need? Uh, publishers have been very concerned with distribution channels, uh, but in both cases, the goal is to get the content where it needs to be when somebody needs to use it. And I think there are, are things we can teach each other here. What about how things look and behave? Uh, librarians were quick on usability as so many of our information resources moved online. Uh, they began to think early and often about where do you put the buttons? How do you get people to click on them? How many clicks to a piece of information? Uh, is this a pleasant user experience? Um, publishers are very good on white space uh, and typography um, and other, other matters of attractive design. And these two things come together beautifully. And I think both worlds are trying to, to, to learn the skills, the skills of the other here. Um, Making things look good and making them usable works together in tandem. Librarians and publishers think a little bit differently, I think, about who they connect with. Um, librarians often talk about their users, maybe about their patrons. Users is probably the most common. Uh, publishers tend to talk about authors and customers. Uh, but I think what both are trying to do is to build relationships with readers and writers. And again and again in conversations with both librarians and publishers, the word relationship comes up. Uh, the value of relationships, the building relationships. I think in the, the past that the, the relationship tended to focus on different parts of the timeline of scholarship. Uh, librarians tended to build relationships and support a lot in the emergent phases, uh, at the, the point of creation where the work is underway. And uh, publishers tended to step in and build relationships later as the, the product was, the product, the scholarship was moving toward publication and helping support it in that way. Um, and I think both librarians and publishers uh, currently are thinking about, and after that, if you sort of say the end of the research life cycle, once we've actually published something, how do we keep it alive for the future? How do we extend it out into the future? Um, one place I found a particular uh, of discord in, dis in discourse has been around business models. Uh, as a librarian, I can't say how many times I had a publisher say to me, you don't understand economic realities. You guys are just funded to do what you need to do. Uh, and I have to say that, that as 
someone who was uh, responsible for a press and who checked sales figures every morning, as I'm sure many of you do, um, and also responsible for a, wide, uh, a large organization within the university library who huddled over my budget reports every month. I have to say that sources and uses may be a little bit different, uh, but the anxieties are much the same. Uh, it, with both, in, in, in both uh, kinds of models, there's um, a pressure to demonstrate value, uh, return on investment, um, and to live within your means. To live within your means and find some money to do something new as well. Um, and that both librarians and publishers struggle with these things. And I want to make it clear, again, that I'm speaking of librarians, both those who are in the emergent field of scope of, um, of library publishing, which Sarah's talked about, and there, it is quite emergent right now, um, and those librarians who work with publishers. I also tend to talk a little bit differently about how we, how we, get, how we measure that return on investment. Um, Use is very important in libraries. Uh, we always tease about how our administrators love numbers, uh, gate counts, circulation counts, uh, how many people are in using the online catalog. Um, also, we like to collect compliments, testimonials. We like hearing from our faculty and students. Um, and we publishers like healthy sales figures, a bestseller list, that's still pretty good. Um, awards uh, for works of merit. Um, but really, we both like being liked and, and getting positive attention. And this is a way of demonstrating return on investment, uh, particularly to those who have invested, whether they be our shareholders or our provost. Um, one thing we both talk about a lot is mission. Um, I'm not sure that we would articulate mission in the same way, but I would say, find it safe to say in this audience, Serving scholarship, uh, that, 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 that that's the mission, um, and that we're proud, invested, passionate about this mission, about this reason for being. Uh, I was at a small conference recently that had a lot of publishers and several librarians, and at one point, uh, somebody very senior and a large scientific publisher got up and said, uh, publishing is about connecting users and information. And I heard this little rumble from the librarians in the back of the room. Wait a second, that's what we do. Uh, but the point I want to make is, well, of course, we both do. So how, how can we do that most effectively together? Uh, I would also um, remind you of um, not remind you, but maybe some of you, you, you don't know it, but the very first American Library Association mission statement, which is 1892, I think, um, the best reading for the greatest member at the lowest cost. Stands up pretty well, I think, 120 something years later. Uh, but I don't think too many uh, uh, publishers would say, hmm, doesn't work for me. Uh, best reading, greatest number, lowest cost, sounds pretty good. Uh, so what are ways in which we, we can find to share our mission? So I'm going to ask you to think about a question. I will, as I began with an allusion to a literary title, uh, anyone know this one? Mm. It was about, about the late poet Adrienne Rich, uh, very important 20th century po uh, poet. She has a book called The Dream of a Common Language. Um, and I would ask you, should publishers and librarians find a common language? And what, in what ways would we benefit from that common language? I'm going to ask you to be patient for just one second. I actually had notes written down that I forgot to grab. Now that you've gotten to think about that cover for a minute. Um, I stole a few lines of Adrian Rich's poetry, um, which I'm going to manipulate just a little bit to make more appropriate for this audience. But um, and So there's one phrase I'm putting in here, go to a meeting that is not in the original poem. But um, it 
it's simple to go to a meeting with a stranger, dress, go out, drink coffee, enter a life again. It isn't sim simple to leave a meeting with a stranger and step into a neighborhood of one neither strange from familiar, whom we have chosen to trust. So when you think about the notion of trust for a minute, a poem later in the same volume, and I'm going to ask you here to substitute the word publisher for woman. You'll hear it. Um, you show me the poems of some woman, my age or younger, translated from your language. Certain words occur, enemy, oven, sorrow, put your fav favorite publishing words in here, enough to let me know she's a woman of my time. And so, so that, uh, you know, I think we can find words in a common language that say we're publishers of our time. So, you say tomato and I say tomato, or if I switch my hats, so I say tomato and you say tomato. I think maybe it's a little early, but <laughs> <laughs> we, we should go for a beer. And uh, I'm thinking about finding that common language, or at least understanding what each other says. And as we do that, find ways that we can provide each other with strategies and skills. Uh, so I think uh, training librarians and publishers together is a, is a good way forward, um, and some of what I'm hoping to do in the coming years. Thank you.